and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me is a newcomer into the temple, creator, uh, creator of the upcoming heist RPG. I'll give you guys a bit of, a bit of a second to figure out what that's going to be about. And come and the and the and the man who is one of the more willing guests I've had when it comes to the time zone shenanigans. The one and only Karsten Dom. How are you doing today, man? Or tonight? Doing great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And thanks for having me. Yeah, thank thank you for com thank you for coming on. Uh oh. So, I I like to start with the humble beginnings whenever I have a newcomer on. I, Walk me through your first introduction to role playing games and what made it stick. Hey, well, um, yeah, in in, in Germany, it's um, um, most people around here play uh, or started out with uh, the Dark Eye, which is um, or local. I, I wouldn't say it's a local version of D and D uh, because it's a different game. But um, well, most people play it, so it's at least it's popular. Um, and in the late eighties, I I started playing uh, role playing games. But uh, unlike most people, um, I started with Warhammer Fantasy role play, mm -hmm. which. Uh, happened because the my friend at or a friend I had at the time uh, who introduced me to the whole hobby uh, uh, his mother was an English teacher and uh, frequently in London so um, he knew role-playing games from games workshop and not from from any uh, local German uh, shops and yeah he he was looking for people to 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 play this game he liked and yeah so that's where i started uh playing role playing games so mm -hmm. warhammer was my first exposure at the time and yeah we, uh, in the late 90s i i started writing i uh, played all kinds of games um what got me hooked was finally hooked was earth dawn uh which we played a lot in that time and in the late 90s i i started to publish um my own stuff fan stuff adventures articles and and all that stuff um written in english um uh, not in german um and yeah somehow that 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 uh uh gained some attention from from people working on the game and uh, in the early 2000s i started to work on a stone myself so we uh, did a revised edition of the rules and uh, went on to to a third edition later on with mongoose so um, i was the lead designer on that and uh, that were a few very nice years where I had uh, the chance to to look after a major game line and um, work with a large team to to uh, get it released and yeah that was so that was my my um, introduction to to games and to publishing i think Mm -hmm. I uh, I went out. Uh, I went on and and dropped out um, from that company, and asked on um, when they had a significant shift in their goals and and, and realigned realigned their their the purpose, and um, I dropped out at the time and um, started a small uh, label where we we're doing uh, indie role playing games. And I mean, really indie. It's, it's they're really, really small games, and um, 
usually one author, one book, that kind of thing. And um, that's what we've been doing, well, for the better part of 10 years now. Mm -hmm. Now, with that, with that in mind, heist is uh, is obviously in the realm of, in the realm of crime fiction. You've on the Kickstarter page itself, you cited Ocean's Eleven, Better Call Saul, and Grand Theft Auto. Um, I'd like I I'm curious what I'm curious what gave you the the idea of taking taking things in that direction. Yeah. Um... Basically, I well, I'm I'm a big fan of of Grand Theft Auto and 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 all that heist stuff that's going around uh, in movies and TV series and and so on. Um, and I know there are a few games like that, but um, they're all, I think, either very small and and rules light. Or coupled with, say, um, board game mechanics or card game mechanics. So um, there was nothing like it, I think. There are, there are a lot of modern games, um, but there's nothing that I could have found uh, which was, well, you play criminals, you, you try to... to uh, rob a few places or um, do other criminal stuff in, in, in that direction. So there's a lot of movies and, and TV series going on, but um, in, in role-playing games, it's it's pretty much uh, not happening. Well, you have you have your 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 heist adventures in, in, in pretty much all games out there, but there's no setting or mm -hmm. or uh, game mechanic related to that. The closest that would come to this, I think, is, is like Shadowrun, for mm -hmm. example, which uh, is basically you, you, where you're doing the runs and everything, but it's, it's well, cyberpunk. It's not modern day. Yeah. Now, with the... I can, I can think of a few that have dipped into the concept of, of crime fiction. Um, my fir my first instance was Haven City of Violence, which, unfortunately, the version that I had played you can't you can't find anywhere officially. You, all that there is is just the D twenty modern version, which is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But within within the se within the setup that you have, um, from as I understand it, you're go you're going with a roll low two d ten approach. Uh. Well, yeah, that's that's uh, the core mechanic. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Um. Was the reason for doing that influenced by your time with Warhammer Fantasy? Kind of. Um, we played back in the nineties. We played Fading Suns a lot, and Fading Suns uses a a uh, similar uh, mechanic, which where you roll a d20 and you have to roll high, but not too high. And mm -hmm. um, I was always intrigued by that and and, and liked it a lot. Yeah. So um, I wouldn't say this is a variation of that rule, but it's um, definitely inspired by it. Mm -hmm. So the the, the uh, core thought behind. All this is, yeah, you have to roll, um, but you don't have to roll too high. Mm -hmm. So the, the initial idea was to, to um, which is close to, or closer to Warhammer, where you have a percentage roll, mm -hmm. and you have to go under that um, to, to, to make it. Um, I wanted to, to make it a bit simpler, which uh, was initially a, a simple D10, where you mm -hmm. uh, have a target number between uh, 1 and 10 and throw the dice so you have nice 10% steps. And um, the beauty of this, this rule is, um, this approach is that uh, when you have to roll high, 
that you can read the die with um how well you did mm -hmm. so the higher higher is better so if your target number is five and you roll a four you did uh pretty well if you roll a five you did everything you could so it's a high performance roll so if you if you roll a six well you failed mm -hmm. but um the beauty is that you can for one thing see how good your chances are target number five on a d10 is 50 percent mm -hmm. and um yeah so and uh, the more the higher you roll it's right there on the die you don't have to think too much you can just see it mm -hmm. um the mechanic in, in heist is is not that simple, unfortunately. Um, I had to to tinker a bit with uh, probabilities and such. Um, so uh, I came to uh, two d10. Mm -hmm. um, you roll both of them, and one of them needs to be equal or lower than the target number. And um, if the other die is higher, then you have a result which I want in my games, which is a success at a cost, mm -hmm. which is um, with the other role, it's not that easy because you're either under or over. So you either succeed or you fail. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it's it's a, um, a result where you succeed, but you also uh, have a consequence, which is uh, that for you. You lose a piece of equipment or... Mm -hmm somebody else comes and uh, gains attention or you gain unwanted attention or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a mechanic you, you need for a game where you play criminals who try to, to um, well, uh, do, so they don't want complications. They do everything to avoid complications. And uh, you need a die result where complications you have to deal with come into the game. So that's mm -hmm. what this was about. Yeah. Ch chances wise, um, if you take two d10 and and draw them, you're not uh, in the area where uh, the die roll is your percentage. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bit. Um, the numbers are a bit lower. So if you if you have a target number of three, you are at about fifty percent. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas with one die you are at 50% at five, which is yeah. easier to grasp, but yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and when it comes, one of the other things that I find kind of interesting is that even with success at a co even with success at a cost or worse, uh, you have you have the notion of edges and complications, but more interesting than and that is the fact that complications can um, can be, be can be banked off in the trouble track. Um, right. What prompted what prompted the creation of that? Um, <laughs> that's that's an interesting role. Um, yeah, uh, when you when you have this um, and you are uh, well right in the midst of your bank robbery or anything and um, there is a die result that we can't have another complication because your heist is already on the verge of turning bad or, or anything you need a a mechanic to to um well yeah sell it off to to just move it to the gm and say okay um please <laughs> Let this be a success, but give it back to me later. Uh, get me in trouble. So mm -hmm. um, that's one of the ideas. Sometimes you don't have the um, creativity to to come up with a complication that suits this situation. For example, mm -hmm. so in those situations, there's one where you're desperate, of course, yeah, and there's there are situations where the creativity creativity at the table is is just not there so um and uh, that's the other way where you where this comes in you can just say okay dear game master um please increase your trouble track and uh, stick it to us at some other time mm 
Um, so um, that's the main reason for it. And it's also a balancing mechanic. Um, I, I think all of us know situations where the game master increases um, the difficulty of that game by adding new opponents or having this, what do you call it in English? Um, when he does something because he can at a whim. Um, Just... GM Fiat. Yeah, right. So um, this mechanic is also an indicator that um, stops any discussion about it. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, some players say, yeah, okay, you just did that because you hate us or <laughs> because you can. Uh, and in this case, it's the trouble check is filling up, which essentially means um, the whole thing is going too well. So um, it's a good indicator for the GM to say, okay, uh, they're running through it and nothing is happening. I have mm -hmm. so many points on my track. I need to use them. So, and um, that's when the police shows up or uh, the tools don't work or your next role is going to be a success at a cost no matter how, how good mm -hmm. you are or something. And, yep. well, the trouble check is proof that <laughs> you earned it mm -hmm. in some way. Yeah. Now... With that, with that, with that in mind, obviously, obviously, when you're dealing with a game that's going that's going to be leaning into crime fiction and all about getting that big score, uh, it's inevitable that somebody's going to want to integrate car, integrate some sort of chase, whether it be car, whether it be parkour, or or, or both. Uh, yes. Or hell, if even if somebody wanted to bring in a tank, a chase with tanks. <laughs> Uh, is that is that something you guys have you guys have accounted for in the design of heist and how and how have you gone about it? Yeah, vehicle use is, is has always been a big thing for me in in, in role playing games because you have an extra set of stats you have to deal with and um, I, I I don't know if you you played Shadowrun first edition back in the day. Um, I did for a bit. I think vehicles in Shadowrun are still a hot mess. <laughs> so, because it's essentially a, a whole different game you're playing. And, um, I wanted to to integrate vehicles and, and as a game, so I did that too. Um, I, I want them to be an extension of the character flying or driving it. Mm -hmm. And stats for vehicles need to be very easy to grasp and very easy to use and um, that's uh, part of the game um, they have a few attributes you need like power or, or speed rate or um, some sort of maneuver maneuverability um, but mm -hmm. it's mostly the character steering it and, and using it so they 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 just enhance your abilities uh, to some degree and come with a very easy sheen to um, have uh, like hit zones and, 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 and all that stuff so mm -hmm. it's very easy to use and there's a um, I think quite compelling uh, pursuit mechanic in it which uh, also works pretty well mm -hmm. um, where you have uh, also use of complications and edges and your pursuers to you try to shake them off it's, it's what, which is the main thing you do but um, you as a driver or, or pursuit mm -hmm. you um, have the power to 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 steer that race so if you're running your motorcycle through a crowded market or something um, there's going to be a base difficulty to, to make your test, of course, um, mm -hmm. but because you are being chased, you have the ability to set a higher difficulty for everyone 
who's chasing you. Mm -hmm. So if you're going through that market or uh, dense traffic or, or whatever you want, um, or if you want to pull a stunt of some kind, uh, which needs to be done in, in, in order to, to chase you. Um, yeah, so you set the difficulty and mm -hmm. uh, everyone following you needs to to beat it too, um, to stay um, behind you or close up and, and all that. So everyone rolls and um, there's a bit of uh, comparison what kind of result you have. So um it's a very easy table so if if, if both succeed you they, every nothing changes same if uh, if both fail that's it's, it's mm -hmm. just that is cool um but if your pursuer succeeds and you do not um they gain on you mm -hmm. and the other way around they they uh, increase the distance to the point where they drop out so yeah. this this runs on on, on basic ranges you have for firearms and and the like mm -hmm. so you can combine a, a pursuit with regular combat mm -hmm. so classic you're, you're sitting in a car doing a chase and two other characters are hanging out of the windows and shooting back trying to hit tires and everything like that so which you can run the combat and 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 stick the pursuit right in it and and out of it uh, using the Vehicle starts your own starts. It's mm -hmm. it's very it's very simple and still, I think, crunchy enough to to have a lot of variance in the game. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Speaking of that, I do find it interesting that the core attributes are built on this um, three by three chart essentially. You have you have the you have three you have three horizontal and vertical axes. I know I'm saying horizontal and vertical, even though on the character sheet it's 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 um it's all written in diamonds. But I ha but I'm doing that for the sake of my sanity. Um, and that that's it's certainly a unorthodox appro approach since a lot of games will have a set um list of attributes. What yeah. made you go with this particular, um, ch this particular way of charting the way attributes are used? Yes, um, there is a uh, when you go to to story games um, or any kind of role playing game, which um, I, say, I say, let's say, dumps down your attributes. So you have in, in DD you have your six core attributes. Everybody knows them. But if you go for a simple story game, they usually go for body, mind, and spirit. Mm -hmm. So you have three attributes, and then if you, you have some skills to put on top of that, um, and that these three are basically uh, three of the axes. So mm -hmm. uh, in, in Heist, we have body, mind, and social. So there's no spirit, but there's a so your social ability. Um, and the other three axes are, are, are building some depth to it. So you have uh, some sort of, um, well, how capable are you? How, how much talent do you have? How um, powerful are you? Uh, what's your tenacity and something like that you can easily just say okay we don't have six attributes we use nine because we want a little more variance in here mm -hmm. um, but I found that the axis um, help giving some um, explanation to it so y your uh, simple example if you uh, cross your social axis with uh, prowess you have your influence attribute mm -hmm. or if you take your mind and your might it uh, the crossroads is intellect or body and vigor is endurance mm -hmm. so there's there's a um, these are building blocks which which lead up to the attribute. Um, in heist, we use this to to 
simplify character creation. Mm -hmm. um, you can, if you want to, you can simply distribute your attribute points like you want to. Uh, but if you use this axis approach, you can easily go there and say, I want my character to be, let's say, um, he's supposed to be strong and, well, talented or um, I want him to be smart and enduring or something like that or charismatic and, and powerful or balanced. So you have very simple check marks on these on this diamond which uh, which are put on the axis. So you have basically zero, one or two points you can put in an axis. Mm -hmm. And once you did that, you just sum up the points can see it right there on the diamond and um, come up with your basic stats. So it's um, it's it sounds very complicated uh, describing it this way, but if you have the visual aid of, of the, the character sheet right in front of you, mm -hmm. um, you can see where you where you just visually just put a small check mark and. Um, see where this leads you there's a small table in it as well where you well i call this priming your attributes um where you where you can just um, read a sentence like this i want my, my character to be charismatic and powerful and uh, it's a table says okay you do mm -hmm. two one zero and uh, one 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 for example and that's it so you can be sure your attributes match up with what you want to have there. Mm -hmm. So, given the fact that this is obviously go obviously going f um, somewhat freeform, aside from the types that are that I mentioned early on, um, how do you how do you make sure how do you make sure that that fo that folks are able to build a, are able to build a direction that they that they can go into without falling into analysis paralysis? Well, the, the, the character types we have in, in, in this game are basically just little helpers. Mm -hmm. Where What do you want to, to, to play? They're not a fully um, a full character class. You have to stick to um, like um, over time. Mm -hmm. So I have a level 10 burglar, for example. This is not happening here. Um, so you you can play um, the six six uh, different um, types. It's a burglar, a hitman, a hustler, uh, a prowler, which is more like a a driver um, mm -hmm. or someone who, who who comes around a lot, uh, a techie, uh, and a watchdog, which is some well, it's 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 your tank. It's a it's a bouncer or or someone who has to look mean and uh, mm -hmm. to do the job. Um, so these are basic directions where you can go. You get um, simple starting packages on perks and skills, which you should pick if you if you go in this direction, so that you are, well, you can do what a burglar can do. And there are a few, uh, the perks are, are like, um, specialized abilities which apply in certain situations well you you get these if you are following that type but nothing is stopping you from um, mixing and matching so um, you you just pay more experience points for example if you if you have a, if you are a hitman you want a burglar ability uh, you can buy it and learn it but it's not your it's not your pass uh, or your type, so it's it's gonna cost you more. Mm -hmm. But well, yeah, you 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 accumulate experience points like in, in in any other game, and you can customize your character like that. So they these are not uh, what, what I mean to say is these are not not as deep as in, as classes are in D D, for example. Mm -hmm. So with. And I did. I did notice that um, 
you ha that when it comes to advancements, that seems to be handled through through if I'm if I'm not mis if I'm not mistaken, um, karma. It's and in it and what's more interesting is that it is that if I'm, if I'm reading this correct, um, karma can act as a extra effort in terms of being able to re in in terms of being able to reroll. Yes, um, yeah, it's it's kind of a luck factor. If you if you if you will, if you spend a karma point, you can mm -hmm. take one of your two dice you're rolling and uh, re-roll it. So you're stuck with the other one. Uh, this increases your chances um, considerably. But um, if you, for example, if you fail. Uh, you have to keep one of the dice, and if if the reroll is successful, you're still stuck with a uh, success at the cost, because there's no way you can turn a failure into a complete success. Mm -hmm. So there's there's that's that's the the, the karma rule. Um, so these the, the karma stat is is increasing very very slowly. So. Um, the more experience you have, uh, the more karma you have over time. Um, but it takes a lot of experience um, to match this. Uh, the, the game goes in, in, in tiers, which is um, basically a form of measuring your level, how many advancements you have. For every two advancements, you rise up in a tier. Mm -hmm. And your tier uh, determines how much karma you have. So every five tiers, your karma goes up by one point. So it's it's very uh, it's a slow progression. So, um, yeah, yeah, I can I can certainly get behind that. Now, with that with that in <clears throat> with that in mind. I do find it interesting that you have these different um, sections within the job sheet. For that's obviously going to be a GM facing th facing thing. Um, what I'm there's a few aspects of that sheet that I'm a bit curious about, namely the front veil and twist. Um, what what would that entail in terms of? setting up what the job is well yeah it's it's certainly gm facing mm -hmm. um it's a little helper where uh, which you use to um structure how difficult the job is uh, in some sense so basically um the front is the most obvious layer of your target. Um, so if you're, for example, going into a bank vault um, or a jewelry store or whatever, um, you won't immediately know what kind of security measures they have, but you can go and do some network uh, and research it. Mm -hmm. And the front is what is officially known so if you dig a little you will know what or you can find out what kind of vault or safe is in the bank or or uh that there are cameras in the jewelry store or um whatever that is it, this might not be um available to the general pub general public or or mm -hmm. uh, known offhand but if you do a little digging, you will find out what is the front. Mm -hmm. So what's security on the front? Um, the wheel is, well, a layer beneath. So it's that's the stuff only a few people know. So those who were involved in designing the vault or... Um, or help build it in some way, or work there. So you you can't find out what the wheel is 
unless you get really involved. So the players have to not just do a little digging, but mm -hmm. they have to, to, to run a deeper investigation. They have to go there, they have to infiltrate the target or um, blackmail people to, to, to find stuff mm -hmm. out what entails the wheel. And the last bit, the, the third bit, is the twist, which is a well-guarded secret. Mm -hmm. So um, this is something you won't find out. It's basically, well, it's not impossible. You can find out what it is, but it's always some kind of surprise. This can be like a um, FBI uh, detail uh, waiting on uh, or observing one of the target characters. You, you won't know that guy is under surveillance and you're running your heist and suddenly the FBI shows up. Mm -hmm. um, not because they are aware of you, but because they have been looking after the store owner or the bank director or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you can, as a player, you can find out what this is, but it's um, it's very hard to do because mm -hmm. it's not usually something um, you would get by just doing your research it's it's mm -hmm. related to it so and for the gm these three things are something to keep in mind when designing your heist mm -hmm. your, your adventure it's it's like a, a little guide where to to put your security measures and so on you you can um well, part of it is, is drawing a little security scheme, for example, which which is also fun for the game master to to set down what alarm triggers and what and, mm -hmm. and uh, all that stuff. And um, this these three uh, help you guide it a, a little bit. Yeah, and I did see that on the scene things you have a you have a bit of an act structure set up. Um, with that, with that in mind, how would you, how would you describe e how would you describe the general direction of each act? Obviously, obviously, the prep scene seem is linked to Act Two. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's 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 also a a uh, helper for the GM to 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 structure a basic robbery or basic heist. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there are a couple of tables which give you different ideas of, of what a heist can be about. Not everyone is robbing a bank, but you can also do other stuff like planting false evidence or uh, stuff like that. And um, this act structure is a basic way of, of finding out what scenes are going to happen in what part of the story it's for one thing it's 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 kind of a um uh guide how to to set the overall tension of the game and it's also um a setup where you where the characters do what so uh, act one is about the getting the job finding out what the basic um, information is you need to what what you need to work against, yeah. So so all this is you you meet your client, um, the mastermind uh, running the whole thing, and um, maybe you rub shoulders with the opposition for the first time. Um, you get some information about the whole thing. Um, so there the tension is low. Um, you haven't quite started doing the job. Um, so you're just putting some, well, no, you, you're you not putting stakes in the ground yet, mm -hmm. but you're uh, finding out what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. So that's act one. And act two, the approach is uh, exactly that, where you put some stakes in the ground, where you act on this information. So you prepare for the job. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where these prep scenes come in. Um, these are, uh, uh, they mitigate against um, players having to plan for every detail and um, 
where they sit five hours and just say, what do we do if this and that happens? So you don't want that in a game because it bogs down the entire story. Um, so you use these prep scenes uh, in Act 2 to set up a basic plan. So um, we need a getaway car, for example, is, mm -hmm. is, is one thing you need in your plan. You need to get away. We need a hideout. We need, if we want to, to threaten people, we need uh, something to threaten them with, which mm -hmm. is maybe a weapon, maybe something else. So we need to that. We, we, we need disguises if we go in with masks and overalls and, and, and sort of stuff like that. So it's, it's about organizing the heist and finding out what elements do you need to run it. Um, and that's what you do in a group. You set down what are these elements and then you run these preparation or, the, you, or you run a preparation scene for each of these elements, which is basically just a short description of what they need to find out, which is accompanied by a single test. Mm -hmm. you, you set up the basics of the scene. So for example, we want to get disguises. We need masks and uh, some side sort of uh, uh, clothing Mm -hmm. to, to, to uniforms, for example. Um, where do we get them? Uh, maybe we uh, run a, a break into a, a, a laundry, for example, or we go into a clothing store and buy overalls. So um, there's not much going around there. Um, so you just find out who does it and what kind of test do we make for it and then we stick with the result mm -hmm. so if it's if it's uh, just one character going to a market to buy a crowbar and some uh halloween masks they are going to use um there's not, not much you can roll about but you would um make a simple test maybe of, of very light difficulty. And um, if that test fails or is a success at a cost, you can, as a, jack, as a game master, you make a note of it and can use this later. For example, the character has accidentally not paid in cash, but used the credit card because he failed his role. So the solution would be okay you paid your credit card so this is mm -hmm. traceable to you in in some way and if the cashier who who uh, sees footage uh, camera footage uh, of a shootout or whatever where you're wearing these masks they sell in their store mm -hmm. he might remember you and the police would have an angle to get after you so it's it's the results you get from all these prep scenes Mm -hmm. are um, a little guide for the game master where, where to they provide hooks for him to 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 use against the players in mm -hmm. the long run um, or make the um, heist harder so if they fail to get unregistered weapons for example but they use weapons um, or want to use weapons but they don't have them well, what are they going to do next? They need to do the highest without weapons or find another way to, to, to achieve the goal. Mm -hmm. um, and that directs the story a little bit. It's basically the approach. It's meant to be fa played faster than the main heist itself. Mm -hmm. uh, and But it sets up a lot of stuff that's going to happen or complicate the heist or it's going to happen in the long run. Yeah. So then the third act is pretty easy. It's the heist itself. So it's where all these things come together, where they hit the gas, go to the to the bank, where they do the actual robbery or uh, whatever it is they are doing the heist about or what the heist is about. And um, 
where they are on the clock. If they uh, trigger an alarm or uh, are found on, on the cameras and so on, mm -hmm. uh, that's where the main action happens. And the final act uh, is a getaway. So they need to uh, escape from the scene and, uh, well, keep their heads low and it's basically dealing with getting away and what happens after so mm -hmm. um this is this the tension is going down uh, at the getaway it starts at high tension where you where you have your escape and all that and then it slowly goes down where you end up either in jail or in your hideout mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Whereas the 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 uh, tension and, and the approach scene is well, I, I I would say it's it's slow, but it it increases the more complications you gather, and it's at the highest in Act Three where you're doing the actual thing. So that's yep. basically life, all or nothing, life or death. Yeah. Now. With that, with that in mind, I I know that it's stated that you're shoot you're shooting for just forty six pages, but what are you shooting for as far as a um a release window for the PDF? Um, the PDF is pretty much done at this point. Uh, I have a few corrections to make after the last uh, editing run and, and uh, I have a bit of test feedback I have to work in. But it's pretty much done and it's going to be out, I would suppose, to all the backers uh, within the next two or three weeks. And um, I'm, at the same time, I'm, I'm dealing with the translation into German, um, which is basically because I have a large German audience. And um, the first question they ask is, is it available in German? So mm -hmm. I prepared for that and uh, translated the whole thing and uh, ran it along with the Kickstarter. So. Um, but it's secondary to the English version, which I designed first and foremost. So um, that's what I'm going to focus on first. Yeah, and I, I I can certainly understand that. Don't want to don't want to hold too many eggs in one in one basket, if you follow me. But with that said, I do I will be looking forward to seeing how it how it develops. And Thank you for taking the time out of your bit out of your schedule and braving the hell of time zones to come all the way to my temple in what's well it's, well over there is pro it's probably closer to the ass end of the night. <laughs> oh well, I, all I'm losing sleep at this is what it is at this point. So <laughs> I try to sleep in tomorrow. I have uh, told the children to walk the dog in the morning, and mm -hmm. uh, hopefully they will. Uh, and of course, anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Well, I had a little glass of rum mm -hmm. by the side, so I was definitely drinking a little bit. Mm -hmm. And which will also help me sleep. <laughs> Yeah, very nice. I'm uh, I'm I'm happy that I had the chance to be here, and uh, wish you good luck with future interviews. Yep. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then. On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>